Hello everyone. I am Ariharan A, 19 BC 1024. I'll be talking to you about uh, visualizing data, data mining algorithms as well as machine learning algorithms uh, using a, a software tool called uh, Orange Data Mining Tool. Now we'll get to know about the Orange Data Mining Tool. Let us go to the official website. Yeah, this is the official website of the Orange Data Mining Tool. Uh, now you can see there are uh, different uh, OS types and uh, we can download uh, this data mining tool for the suitable OS. I have Windows, so I'll be downloading this. If you click on this button, you will have an exe file downloader. After that, if you run that as administrator, you'll be able to uh, open the orange data mining tool and uh, proceed with the visualization. Now let us go to the user interface. Yeah, now we can see this is the user interface. First, let us start with the widget or uh, file widget. This is the file widget. Here, when you click on this, you can see a uh, tab opening. Yeah, this tab signifies the data set which we are dealing with. Uh, I'll be choosing hard disease uh, data set. As you can see, there are like numerous features and the type of the features, name of the features, and if it's a categorical feature, what are the categories so the feature has. Suppose we take uh, gender, it is classified as male, female. If we take chest pain, it's classic. Uh, Fight as asymptomatic, a typical NGL, non NGL, a typical NGL. And if we take fasting blood pressure, it is a categorical feature of zero or one. And rest ECG, maximum HR, exercise and NGL. And yeah, you can see this is the target value, which is zero or one. That is the diameter or narrow. This specifies that if the diameter is not narrowing, the person does not have an heart disease and he has a less risk of having a heart disease. And if it is one, uh, he has more possibility of having a heart disease. Now let us see more about this. Now this is a target feature. If we want, we can change this feature to a meta feature. That is, this feature may not be used in the visualization. That is, while calculating the accuracy, or training the data, this feature won't be included. But uh, let us include this feature also to get uh, in order to get more accuracy. Now oh, this is the file widget. Now in order to view this file widget, uh, like in form of the data table, let us connect these two. Now you can see the data clearly as in an Excel sheet. These are the features of uh, predicting heart disease. So what is important here is like uh, we are using these features in order to predict whether the person has heart disease. So let us focus on that more. Yeah. Now we'll be focusing on the uh, uh, data sampling, which is like splitting the data into training data set and testing data set. For that, let us uh, take data sampler. This will split the data into training data set as well as uh, testing data set. And we'll fix the fixed proportion as 75, 75% training data and 25% test data. Yeah, that's all. And now you can see uh, 228 uh, instances are like allocated for training data and 75 instances are allocated for testing data. Yeah, now we'll be, uh, what we'll be doing is like pre-process the data first, and then it will be easier for uh, sampling the data. As uh, if you're not pre-processing the data, there might be some missing values, which might uh, 
be a problem while visualizing data in terms of scatter plot. So what we'll be doing is first we'll add a preprocessor. From the data table, let's add it to the preprocessor. Yeah, and here uh, we'll impute the missing values. Here, the missing values will be replaced with the average or the most frequent uh, values, or it can be replaced with random values, or we can remove the rows with missing values. We can take any of these three. Uh, for now, I'm taking the average and the most frequent uh, values. It can be replaced with the missing values. So now it's applied. And now let us take the pre processed data to the data sampler. After using data sampler, uh, let us start with uh, visualizing the data using scatter plot. Let us send this pre-processed data on the scatter plot. See, now you can see the graph. Uh, you can see uh, the graph between uh, cholesterol and uh, tal, the x-axis is cholesterol and the y-axis is tal. You can also change to the exercise versus cholesterol. And also you can uh, find the informative projections. That is the, what are the possible uh, plots we can uh, obtain from this uh, data set. And this is blood vessels color versus tal. And this is chest pain versus blood vessels color. And these are the uh, uh, graphs that we obtained from the data set. Now you can see uh, blue is zero and red is one. Which means like a, a person having a, one is, ha is a high risk of having a heart disease and a person who is having a zero is not having heart disease. And now you can see the diameter of the blood vessels, the major vessels, in the X axis and the maximum HR of the HR in the Y axis. We can also color the, you can also show a regression line. Can see, or we can. There are multiple features, uh, so there are multiple regression lines, and also we can show that as a color region, where here we can see the most of the people do not have a heart disease, and here most of the people have a high risk of having a heart disease. Yeah, and here we can see the cholesterol versus uh, the gender. Yeah. And now let us go to the naive base classifier. Let us start uh, the and now from the data sampler, we'll give the sa data sample data to the naive base. And uh, you can see the input the data preprocessor. And the output is uh, when you hover over the navy base, you can see the uh, output data, the learner and the model. So, in order to get the evaluation results, let us see test and score. Here, the test has inputs uh, the data and the test data. So, now this is just the model, and for the Test data, let us take from the data sampler the data and the uh, yeah, and you can see this is the data sample data and the remaining data. The this data is a training data set and this is a testing data set. And what we'll do is like match them appropriately. 
Yes, now the data set is matched and now we can see the test and score of naive ways. As you can see, this is the area under the curve, which is 0 0.906. And this is the classification accuracy, which is 0 0.82. This is the F1 score, the precision and the recall. We can also uh, sample it using cross-validation or else you can also do random sampling, which uh, increases the increases or decreases the accuracy. As you can see, now the accuracy is increased when we are using cross validation. And now we can test on test data. We test on the test data, we are having an accuracy of 0 0.84, which is uh, pretty good. Yeah, and now in order to see the predictions, another model called predictions. And now we have to link this to the test and score. Yeah, and now you can see what is the naive base predicting and what is the actual data. And you can also see the probability. Probability of having a one and probability of having a zero. And the final result of naive base is filtered here. As we can see, uh, most of the data is matching by this one is not matching. This one is also not matching. Similarly, this one. Yeah, now we have seen a uh, naive base uh, uh, classifier algorithm and how is it predicting and the testing and evaluation part. Now let us uh, compare this with the uh, logistic filters. Yeah. Now this is the logistic regression widget. Let us connect it to the sample data. To get the test and evaluation, let us include test and score widget. As well as to get the predictions, let us use predictions widget. Now we'll have to match the data sample with the data and the remaining data as the test data. This is the use of the data sampler we have already discussed previously. Now after, uh, now we'll see the test and score. We have a pretty good uh, classification accuracy as well as F1 score and area under the curve. And we can also like uh, check with random sampling uh testing on uh, test data while testing on test data we have an amazing accuracy of uh, 0 0.893 which is very good uh, compared to naive base which we have is uh, 0 0.84 as for the predictions yeah you can see the diameter narrowing as well as the actual data as well as the predicted data. These are the rest of the features we have used for the data visualization as well as prediction. Yeah, and now you can see like we have uh, uh, seen the testing part and the prediction part. Now let us see the confusion matrix.
now you can see the confusion matrix and uh, this is a correct uh, uh, prediction which is uh, actual true positive and uh, true negative and uh, see the misclassified as like false positive and uh, false negative this is like pretty actually less and this the number of instances these are the number of instances uh, shown and the, this is a proportion of predicted we have 82 percent of uh, true positive sorry a uh, true negative and uh, this is true positive we can see accordingly Similarly, let us see the confusion matrix for the logistic regression. So for logistic regression, we can see the, uh, we have to show the coefficients as well as the intercept of the logistic regression. And for that, we'll have to display it in a data table. So, We'll display it in a data table. See, you can see the coefficients data. You can see the intercept, which is like uh, y m x m one x one m two x two m two x three so on plus n features uh, plus c. If that is the equation, you can see the intercept. And you can see the respective slope of uh, various uh, features are shown here. And yeah, you can also visualize numeric values. And these are the coefficients involved in logistic regression. As you can see, this is the confusion matrix we have obtained uh, from logistic regression. And let us see the percentage of predict portion of predicted. This is actually pretty high compared to nice base. And this is the uh, true positive and the true negative percentage. And this is false positive and the false negative percentage. Like, like if we see number of instances, it will be better. And now we have uh, come to the end of the session, which is like now we have seen how uh, we can apply a logistic regression and naive base to a heart disease data set and how we can predict whether the person has a risk of a heart disease or not. And uh, we can also conclude that uh, logistic regression has a high, uh, what can I say, high prediction rate, uh, high classification accuracy as well as a prediction and recall compared to naive days. Yeah. Thank you for your time for watching. Uh, stay tuned.